two more hours. Right. Take exactly two hours to get to Abbotsville from that last turn we just made. I remember timing it the first time we came to Uncle Jim. I wish it were a little closer. This is without a doubt the roughest road in the entire state of California. Abbotsville, ain't you? That's right. Well, you ain't gonna make it on this road. Why not? Morning, ladies. The Canyon Creek Bridge is out. Out? Collapsed sometime during the night. Well, I ain't surprised. What with them heavy ore wagons using it the way they do? Guess we'll just have to turn around. Isn't there another road into Abbotsville? Well, you get there through Tyler's Cut, but that's 35 miles out of the way. What about it, driver? Sorry, miss. I got to connect with the eastbound mail train out of Parkersburg. You got to go back to Lake Junction and then through the valley. Well, I guess there's only one thing for us to do. Go back to Lake Junction and rent a buggy. Well, that's a mighty hard road through Tyler's Cut, ma'am. I wouldn't try it if I was you. I don't see how it could be any rougher than this road. But thanks for the warning. Get up! What happened? The ladies are going to hire a livery at Lake Junction and go by way of Tyler's Cut. They'll be late getting to Abbotsville, but they'll get there. Into the bank. I know. Just had to have another talk with Seth Duncan. He spent an hour telling me about his new grandchildren. And another half hour raving about a shipment of caviar he just got from Russia. When I got to talking about the loan, he suddenly remembered an appointment he had with his tailor. Dad, why do you keep wasting your time? Now, you know there isn't a bank in the country that's going to lend money on silver these days. And I don't want you begging Seth Duncan for help. We've kept the mine running so far, haven't we? Yes, yes, but... Uh... Now, no buts about it. That mine's operating. It's going to keep on operating. I promise you that. Well, I just... Now, Dad, why don't you go back to work? I'll talk to you later. All right, sir. All right. <laughs> Sparkly. Eric. How nice to see you. Oh, Eric, how are 
you. Audra, my goodness. Look it's been you. a long time. Three years. Yes, you were just about to join some law firm in San Francisco. <laughs> That's right. And Dad talked me into coming back here and opening up an office of my own. Uh, well, may I invite you to join me for lunch? Oh, no, thank you. I'm sure Jim is waiting for us in the hotel. Uh, he's not there, Mrs. Barclay. Are you sure? Positive. Well, we're hours late. Well, we better get on to the ranch, then. Oh, Mrs. Barclay, I... I don't think that would be advisable. Oh? It's, uh... It's, uh... Your brother-in-law. He's ill. Ill? It's his mind. His mind? That happened just a couple of months ago. Jim and I had been to Arizona to look over some of his holdings. One day, well, about a week after we came back, he, uh... Well, what, Eric? What? He tried to kill his foreman. Mike Newcomb? Mike was working in the barn. Jim came storming in, babbling something about Mike trying to ruin him by poisoning his cattle. He went after Mike with a bailing hook. He had him down, he would have killed him if some of the hands hadn't been close by. Since then, we've had to keep Jim confined to his room. You mean he's kept locked up? I'm sorry, but we had no other choice. Mrs. Barkley, I know what a shock this must be to you. But I'm afraid your brother-in-law is hopelessly insane. I, I, I don't understand. I, I, I don't understand why we weren't told about this. Well, I suppose I should have. I kept putting it off, thinking that maybe Jim would recover. Or at least show some signs of improvement. Then when I got your letter to him, well, I got all of his mail now. Saying that you were stopping here in Abbotsville on your way to a wedding in San Francisco. I decided to wait until you arrived so I could, well, break the news to you in person. Would, um, would you drive us out to the ranch? Certainly. If you're sure that's what you want to do. I took the liberty of reserving rooms for you here at the hotel. I thought you might prefer staying here under the circumstances. No, no. I want to see Jim under any circumstances. All right. I'll get my rig. He's up there. I want to see him. Well, Dr. Morley's with him now. Dr. Morley? Yes. Oh, uh, he's new in town. He's a young man who knows a lot about modern medicine. Well, what happened to Dr. Pierce? Oh, Dr. Pierce? Oh, he's still around. He'll go on forever, I suppose. But, uh, Dr. Pierce is a little old-fashioned. I felt Jim should see somebody who knows more about this sort of thing. Come on. Come on into the living room. We seldom use this room since Mr. Jim took sick. I've always loved this house. Oh, it's been home to Mike and me for a lot of years now. I don't really know what we'll do when it comes time to leave. Now, Mrs. Newcomb, let's not think about that. Mr. Barkley needs you and Mike now more than he ever has. The Newcombs have been very loyal through all this. Well, I just wish I could do more. It's hard just to stand by and see a fine man like Mr. Jim. But I better see about supper. You'll stay and have it with us, Mr. Eric? Well, it's very kind of you, Mrs. Newcomb. Thank you. Oh, if I'm not intruding. Not at all. Well, then, I'll just get things started. So 
I've given him an injection. He'll quiet down now. Dr. Morley, this is uh, Mrs. Victoria Barkley and her daughter, Audra. How do you do? I'd like to see him. I can't permit that, Mrs. Barkley. For your own safety, he's much too upset. When can we? Well, I'm not sure. But, Doctor, they have to catch the morning stage to San Francisco. Wouldn't it be possible for them to... Well, you know as well as I do how unpredictable Mr. Barkley's moods are, Eric. I'm afraid we'll just have to wait and see how he is in the morning. Well, now, I must be getting along. I'll walk out with you, Doctor. Yes, I'll be back in the morning before you leave. Would you like to freshen up before supper? Yes, thank you. I'll have your bags brought right up. like that. He paces and paces and paces for hours on end, up and down, back and forth like a... Not for me. No, me, thank you. I'll just finish what I have and run, if you forgive me. I promised Dad I'd stop by the office tonight. How is your father, Eric? Well, these are pretty rough times for him, Mrs. Barkley. Yes, I guess his silver mine is the only one in the state that hasn't shut down. They'll never shut him down. You know Dad and how he feels about Abbotsville. This is his town. He started it. He built it. He's poured his whole life into it. Let me tell you something you might not know. My father lost a fortune in the crash of 66, and again in 71. But the mine and the stamp mill didn't shut down for one day. He kept the men working, and he kept Abbotsville alive. I know the story. Your father is a fine man. Yes, he is, Mrs. Barclay. They don't come any finer. Well. I'd better be getting along. Oh, now, I'll see if Grace can use some help. Order, take uh, Eric to the door. Eric, very nice seeing you. Well, I wish it could have been under happier circumstances. So do I. I'm sorry you have to leave tomorrow. I am, too. You were very close to your uncle, weren't you? Used to talk a lot about you. Well, about your brothers, too, but mostly about you. One didn't know better, one would have thought that you were Jim's daughter. In a way, I was after my father died. He and Uncle Jim were so much alike. This was a second home to me. It was such a warm, busy, gay place. <laughs> Yes, there was always something happening. A party, a barbecue, a picnic. Except after Aunt Ellen died. I spent that summer here. We rode and took long walks and sat out on the porch in the evening. Sometimes we talk, other times we just sit. And I realized I was the one person in the world he wanted to be with. I was only 15, but it was the first time anyone really needed me. Look, Audra, I know how much you want to see your uncle. But if you want my opinion, you won't do it. You won't know him the way he's changed. And he probably won't know you. Wouldn't you rather remember the man you did know? Think about it. Goodbye, Audra. Goodbye.
have you been? Mrs. Newcomb invited me to stay to supper. And I'll bet you haven't had a thing to eat. All right, let's go get you some. I don't want anything. Hey, come on, partner. Quit worrying. How did Mrs. Barkley take the news? First some supper, then we'll talk. We'll talk now. Well, she took it about as I expected. She wants to see Jim, naturally. But she won't. There just won't be enough time before she and Audrey have to catch the morning stage. Morley will see to it. Are you sure? Suppose he can't. Oh, Dad. I know Victoria Barkley, Eric. So do I. She's no fool. Far from it. If she ever suspects... She won't. I... I can't let you do this for me, Eric. This is my problem. Dad... Dad. Dad, one of the first things I ever remember you telling me when I was a boy is that I would never have a problem that wasn't our problem, yours and mine. And that's the way it's always been. Eric, and this time it's my turn, Dad. I want to tell the truth. But you'd be ruined. Dad, don't you understand? Everything you've worked for your whole life would end up nothing. I'm not going to let that happen to you, Dad. I'll never let that happen to you. Now, let's go home, huh?
Miss Barkley, I didn't mean to frighten you. I just got back from town, saw the barn doors open, thought it might be a prowler. <laughs> well, it was, it was so warm I couldn't sleep. I came out for a breath of fresh air. Pretty warm night, all right. I'm sure glad you and Miss Audra came. Might help, Mr. Jim, you and your family being his only living relatives. Eric and the doctor don't seem to think so. They believe he's beyond help. It could be. Pretty bad with him. I guess maybe uh, Mr. Eric or Grace told you how he came at me with the bail hook. That must have been a terrible experience for you. I don't blame him. Wasn't the man I'd known all these years. Just some poor, kill-crazy animal that didn't know what he was doing. Mike, what happened to the horses? Mr. Jim sold them. His pal of me knows when. Right after he took sick. But why? He loved those horses. Why would he get rid of them? Well, I guess you could ask that question about a lot of things he did. All I know is that one day Mr. Eric came to me and told me to sell them for the best price I could get. Eric told you? Yes, ma'am. Oh, he's been sort of running things for Mr. Jim for, well, it's over a year now. He's got full power of attorney and everything. But Mr. Jim did approve of the sale of the horses. Mm -hmm. Mike, this ranch isn't being worked at all, is it? I mean, the bunkhouse empty, the corral overgrown, why? Well, mostly because the men we had left after what Mr. Jim did to me. And you couldn't hire others? Greenhorns and waddies, maybe, but none worth their salt. You've got a spread of your own, Miss Barkley. You know how it is. Place gets a bad name for something, and the good men just. Good night, Mike. Good night, Miss Barkley. Good morning. I thought I'd come out and drive you into town to catch a stage. Well, that was very thoughtful of you, but you needn't have bothered. Mike would have taken us. Well, as a matter of fact, I had to come out anyway. I'm afraid I've got some rather disappointing news for you. Oh? Dr. Morley was called over to Wall River on an emergency. Then he won't be here this morning. I'm afraid not. At least not before you have to leave. He asked me to apologize for him. Is that all he said? No. He told me to tell you that he couldn't permit you to see Jim unless he was present. Look, I'm not sure I agree with him. But if he feels that way, well, I'm afraid that's the way it's going to have to be. Did he say when he would be here? No. This afternoon, perhaps? Well, he didn't say. I just don't know. Well, there's nothing for us to do but wait and see. Uh, but your stage leave... We won't be taking it. Now, what about the wedding? Won't you miss it? Well, there's a 7 o'clock train tonight out of Parkersburg, and that will get us into San Francisco in plenty of time. As a matter of fact, this whole thing may work out much better. It will give me a chance to go into town and see some friends I haven't seen for a long time. Would you like to come with me, Audra? No, thank you. I'll stay here. Well, then I guess I'd better be getting back to town. Look, I can come back and drive you to Parkersburg if you like. Oh, no, no. Mike will take us. Well, then I'll say goodbye again. Eric, uh, Eric, before you go, I'd like to ask you a question. Why did you sell Jim's Palominos? Why? Because Jim told me to. That was after he became ill? Yes. Well, surely you are not letting him run his own affairs in his condition, are you? Oh, of course not. But in a case like this, what difference did it make? You see, the horses didn't mean anything to Jim anymore. Five minutes after he told me to sell them, he couldn't remember that he had ever owned them. But you went ahead and sold them anyway, hmm? Mrs. Barkley, those Palominos were expensive to keep. And with the ranch not working, with everything going out and nothing coming in, I didn't feel that I could afford to be sentimental about a bunch of horses. Well, I suppose you're right. But I wish I had known about the situation here. 
I would have bought those horses. I know how much they meant to Jim. And we Barclays, well, we put great store in sentiment. I'll remember that the next time. Bye, Mrs. Barclays. Sit down, sit down, sit down. You look fine, just fine. Thank you. How's the family? Everybody's sitting up and taking nourishment? Uh-huh. <laughs> Good. Now, what can I do for you? You don't need a doctor. I can tell that just looking at you. I came here to talk to you about Jim. How is he? That's what I want to know. I don't know. Uh, I'm not his doctor anymore, you know. There's a new fellow in town, Dr. Morley. What can you tell me about him? Well, I don't know. Nothing much. Came to Abbotsville about two months ago. Just about the time that Jim uh, began to fail. Where did he come from? Some sewer camp, I understand. The way these sewer camps have been shutting down lately, this state is going to have almost as many unemployed doctors as it has miners. <laughs> you know, Dr. Morley first set up practice here. I thought he was going to run me right out of business. Him being young, knowing all the new ways of doing things, somehow it hasn't worked out that way. What do you mean? Well, he kind of discourages folks from coming to see him. Talk has it that he has a private income and he doesn't care whether he has any patients or not. Except Jim, apparently. Have you seen Jim? Is that what's bothering you? Among other things. Like what? That I knew nothing about Jim's condition until Audra and I got here yesterday. Now, when was the last time you saw him? Just before he and Eric went on that trip to Arizona. How was he? Fine, as far as I could tell. But that doesn't mean a thing. Jim was in Arizona almost a month. Anything can happen to a man in that time. Doesn't it seem odd to you that... Um, this man, Morley, was called in after you had been Jim's doctor for years. Ah, uh, to me it doesn't. I'm an old man, Victoria. And I haven't kept up with the latest developments in medicine. I don't make any bones about it. No? No, my feelings aren't hurt because Eric called in Morley. I think he did the right thing. I might have recommended the same thing myself. Well, I would like to ask a favor of you. What's that? That you see Jim before Audra and I leave here. Now, what good will that do? I don't know, but would you do it? I can't, Victoria. Not without Morley's permission. Amos. And anyway, I'm supposed to be in Lake Junction Amos, today. this is important. All right. I'll... Discuss it when I get back. No, no, that will be too late. Audra and I will be gone. Well, Lake Junction isn't that far. Eh? I'll be back in a few hours. That was the bridge out. What bridge? The Canyon Creek Bridge. man flagged down the stage yesterday and said the bridge had collapsed. Well, the Canyon Creek Bridge isn't out. I came across it myself just Amos, yesterday the evening. the man stopped the stage and... Someone wanted to delay Audra and me in getting to Abbotsville. Or... Perhaps they didn't want us to get here at all. It kind of seemed that way, wouldn't it? Maybe I'd better take a look at Jim. Good. What time are you leaving? We have to leave the ranch at 5 in order to catch the 7 o'clock train. Uh-huh. Well... I have to make a call out that way later. 
I could be by Jim's about four. Thank you, Amos. Thank you very right. much. on my way to your office. I've just had a talk with Amos Pierce. Oh? About Jim? Yes. I asked Amos to see him. Did he agree? Any objections? No, I have no objections. But Dr. Morley will. Dr. Morley is not in town, and I have no intentions of leaving here until I know more about Jim's condition than I do. Dr. Morley told you. He told us nothing. Well, it's not my place to say anything in a case like this. If you want Amos Pierce to see Jim... I do. Well, that's fine with me, Mrs. Barkley. Eric? Mrs. Barkley. the buggy around. He says you better leave now or you'll miss your train. I'll take your suitcases out. I can't understand where Amos is. He said he'd be here before five. Mother, why don't we miss the wedding? Oh, no, no, you can't do that. You're maid of honor. Harriet would be terribly disappointed. Well, that can't be helped. Yes, it can. Yes, it can. Now, you go on to San Francisco. Mother, Now, I hear don't... me out, hear me out. After the wedding, come right back here. You'll be gone less than 48 hours. And then we can stay on here as long as we want. You'll be sure to send me a telegram after you've seen Uncle Jim. Mm -hmm. It will be waiting for you when you get to San Francisco. Oh, uh, those two bags will stay here. You're not going? Audra is, but I'm staying. Now, Audra, give Harriet my love and tell her how sorry I am. I will. I'll be back Sunday. All right. Have a good time. Can I fix your cup of tea, Mrs. Barclay? No, no, thank you. I'm going to drive into Abbotsville. I was looking for Dr. Pierce. I guess you haven't heard. Along with Jim Barkley, Amos Pierce was one of my father's oldest friends. And I've known Doc Pierce for well, for as long as I can remember anybody. Mrs. Barkley, I am just as shocked by what's happened as you are. And if you're implying that I had anything to do with it... I asked a question. The answer is yes. Yes, it was a coincidence that this happened to Doc Pierce right after you asked him to see Jim. Such coincidences do occur. Mrs. Barkley, it's obvious that you don't trust me. Now, I don't know why. I'm interested in my brother-in-law's welfare. And his estate. Well, come now, Mrs. Barclay, isn't that a fair question? After all, when Jim dies, you will be his sole beneficiary. Well, I'm not exactly a poor relation who needs his money. Oh, that's true. Then what are you getting at? Well, I'm trying to find out what it is that you suspect me of. The thing that comes to mind is that perhaps you think I am mismanaging Jim's financial affairs. So? So you've got an appointment with me for 9 o'clock tomorrow morning to receive a complete accounting of all my transactions with Jim. I want to see Jim, not his ledgers. I'll arrange for that at the same time. All right, Eric. All right. But you and Dr. Morley had better not disappoint me this time. Because I'm going to see Jim before I leave here. 
even if it means breaking down his door to do it. I, I went into his room. I know, I know. That's why we tried to convince you he was dangerous. Mike and Grace found you unconscious on the floor. Where's Jim now? He's gone. Gone? He ran away. Sheriff Clark and a posse are out looking for him now. Oh, well, I... Now, have... now, you got to rest, Mrs. Barker. You've got to rest. I want you to take this medicine. It'll help you to sleep. I, I... Dr. Morley prescribed this for Grace. It'll start working right away. What is it? Your ring. My ring? It wasn't Jim. It was you! You! Run! <laughs> about what happened here last night is all over town. How could I stay away? Look, I want you to go home and stay out of it. Let me handle it. What are you going to do? Please, just go home. Well, tell me. All right. Victoria Barkley knows it was me in a room last night. What else does she know? Isn't that enough? I'm going to tell the truth, Eric. Oh, Dad, will you just stop saying that? I don't care what happens to me. I won't permit murder. You're too late. What do you mean? Do you really think Amos Pierce fell down those cellar steps accidentally? Eric. Mrs. Barkley had talked him into seeing Jim. I had to stop him. My God. So if you tell the truth now, it'll be the news for all of us. The Newcombs, Morley, for you and for me. Amos Pierce. What are we, Eric? What have we done? What have we done? Dad, we saved the mine. We saved the jobs of 200 men. And we saved Abbottsville. Who's going to save us? Sheriff Clark is here. Any news, Sheriff? Yeah. We found these on the riverbank between here and the Edwards place. 
Have you ever seen them before, Mrs. Newcomb? They're Mr. Jim's. You sure? Yes, he was wearing them yesterday. I put them out for him. What do you think, Chef? He took these off to swim the river? Well, that's how it looks to me. But it'd be a miracle if he ever made it, the way the current is this time of year. I put men to searching both banks of the river between here and Griffin's Ferry. But the way the river is, I, I have a hunch we'll never find Jim, alive or dead. How's Mrs. Barkley? She's still unconscious. I left word for Dr. Morley to get out here as soon as he returns from Wall River. But I'm afraid he's going to be too late. Well, if she dies, maybe it's a blessing that Jim did drown crossing that river. I'll see you later, Eric. All right, sir. I thought you might like some hot coffee. Mrs. Newcomb, you go up and stay with Mrs. Barkley. Morley should be here in a few minutes. Now keep the door locked and be careful. She knows it wasn't Jim Barkley in that room last night. Mrs. Newcomb, you and Mike don't want to have to leave here after all these years, do you? No. You just remember that. I'm not likely to forget it, Mr. Eric. You can buy people like Grace and Mike pretty cheaply. But a man like Morley must be rather expensive. He is. But he's worth it when you need him. <laughs> Mrs. Bush! Oh! What? What? No! No! Oh. Help! Help! Mr. Eric! Mrs. Newcomb! Mr. Eric! Help! Please! Help! Help! Mr. Eric! Mr. Eric! I... I'm not him! Help! Where's Jim? What have you done with him? Answer me, where's Jim? The medicine's beginning to work, isn't it, Mrs. Barclay? Answer me! He's dead. You killed him? No. Actually, it was an accident. It happened when we were in Arizona. His horse threw him. He was killed instantly. We were four days from the nearest town, so I buried him where he died. If you didn't kill him, why did you try to make me believe he was still alive? He did it for me. For you? To keep the mine open. 
to save Abbottsville. When the bank refused to lend me the money to keep going, Eric got it for me by using Jim's power of attorney to sell off some of his holdings. The Arizona land, the horses and cattle here in the ranch. We had to pretend Jim was alive in order to keep his estate from being settled and to keep you from knowing what we'd done. Oh, I intended to repay the money, and I still intend to. All I need is time, just a little time. And I'll pay back every penny. We'll make it up to you. And how are you going to make it up to Amos Pierce? Now you get out of my way. Let her go. I can't do that. Get out of... Get out of my... No! No! Hey. Now, as soon as Morley gets Eric, you... Eric, stay out of it. You got what you wanted, didn't you? Just stay out of it, Dad. And what did you get out of it, Eric? The pleasure of saving a dead mine and a ghost town for your father? Or were you trying to save it for yourself? A dead mine and a ghost town wouldn't have been much for you to inherit, would it? What is? That's enough, Eric. Why didn't you answer her? Get her out of here. No, Mike. Let her go. We've done enough. Can't you see what she's trying to do? I see. That is not true. I wasn't doing it for myself. I'd like to believe that. You can. I'll take your word for it. And put down the gun. Give it to me, Dad. No, Eric. No, please. Give me don't. the gun. Let me have no. the gun. Give me no. the gun. Dad, no, let me have the gun. You must let me have the gun. You have to. <laughs> No, Mike, let her go. you still up? Oh, I wasn't sleepy. I guess I'm enjoying being at home too much. How is the dance? Oh, you know those Cattlemen Association dances. Same old stampede. Uh, by the way, Tom Porter is bringing our little Miss Audra home. Oh. I'm glad Audra went to the dance. I think in a way, Jim's death was harder on her than any of us. Oh, Jared. I want you to do a favor for me. Name it. I want you to go to Abbotsville and see Ben Abbott for me. See Ben? What for? Before I left, I persuaded the district attorney to drop charges against Ben. I felt that with Eric's conviction of the murder of Amos Pierce, that Ben had suffered enough. Well, it could be. Just what is it you want me to see Ben about? Well, I want you to find out how much it will cost to keep the mine operating for another six months. I think that the price of silver will be back up again, don't you? Possibly so, possibly so. But there's a little more to it than that, isn't there? Yes. Ben Abbott uh, was a desperate man, but he's not a murderer. He saved my life. And I think I'd like to try and save his town for him. Otherwise, a, a lot of innocent people may be hurt. And we, we don't want that. We don't need another ghost town. I'll tell you what. I'll leave first thing in the morning. Thank you. Good night, Mother. Good night. Jared. Hmm? Did you say that? 
Tom Porter was bringing Audra home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's a very nice young man. I got the feeling Audra felt the same way. Mm. She saved every dance for him. Well, that's very, very interesting. You know, I get the distinct feeling that you know something I don't. Apparently, Audra didn't tell you what happened at Harriet's wedding. No, what did happen? She caught the bride's bouquet. <laughs> Barclay's ready? Now, don't you worry about us. Oh, we ain't, are we, Jerry? <laughs> no, we ain't worried about them Barclays at all, Zach. <laughs> Three years running. Our ranch is one of the rodeo. We're going to do it again just to keep you Barclays humble. Oh, no, I wouldn't count on that. I mean, you Mortons may be in for a little spry. Well, it seems to me I recollect you saying the same thing last year. <laughs> <laughs> you just keep on laughing. Nick? Now, my papa says you Barclays are sporting. Well, now, your papa is right. What is your sport? Well, I got a thousand that says we win the rodeo. And I got five that says you don't. A thousand? A thousand. You got a bet? You got you a bet. <laughs> what was that all about? Hmm? Oh, you mean, you mean the Mortons? The Mortons. Yeah, well, it was just a little sporting proposition on the rodeo. Uh-huh. So. How much? Oh, five hundred thousand. Want a piece of it? you got to be out of your mind. You don't want a piece of it. Well, somehow I have a little feeling about this rodeo. Well, you had a little feeling about last year's rodeo, and how much did that cost? Oh, well, now, that was different. This year, the Mortons the are going to... The Mortons gonna... are going to walk all over us, and you know it. Zack baited you, and you bit. What would you have done? Passed. Passed. Nick, will you use your head? They're even stronger this year, and two of our hands are laid up. Well, now, whose side are you on? Ours, ours, but we haven't got a prayer. They've recruited every cowboy between here and Waco. Uh oh I can win that rodeo for you. Joshua Watson, Baha. time you got back. I just got a little busy in town, so oh, thank you. You always get busy in town when there's work to be done here. You're gonna thank me for it this time. For what? For Joshua. Joshua Watson. He's my brother Heath. Howdy. He's gonna win that rodeo for us single-handed. Well, that's a pretty big chore. Uh-huh. Can you rope? Better than most. You ever do any bulldogging? One more than my share. Can you ride a bronc? That's my best. That's your best, huh, Josh? Well, now, let's see. Charlie? Nick, wait a minute. Uh, Charlie! Yeah, Nick? Saddle up a baton and bring him here, will you? Uh, Charlie, I said saddle up a baton and bring him here. I'll give him a hand. All righty. Nick, what are you trying to prove? Oh, just take a 
man's word. He said uh, that was his best. But you know, Archie and Dale both got busted up trying to ride that horse. Mm. You going to ride that horse? Yep. Do you know what you were doing? I know. They call that horse a bad one. The name means devil. A lot of spirit. I would say, yeah. No, I never rode a horse before to prove a point. Oh? What do I get for breaking him? Name it. How about the horse? <laughs> All right. You break him, he's yours. All right. You don't have to ride him. Well, I've been riding the devil all my life, he. He ain't throwed me yet. To ride this horse. Go oh, crazy. <laughs> Turn him out! <laughs> That horse. Haven't you had enough? Ain't a man can't beat road, but ain't a horse can't be road. Mm. Easy, horse. Easy, boy. Ain't no need to fight. Cause I'm gonna break you. <laughs> All right, stay with him, Josh. Riding Joshua. <laughs> I think he's got him. I think we just won ourselves a rodeo. Walk, horse. Walk proud for the people. Walk on, boy. Good boy. And ride, boy. This man's got to be the greatest mustanger ever. Well, is there anything this Joshua Watson can do? <laughs> he can rope, but Bronx, why, he can even bulldog. Did he really ride a bad one? Yeah, that horse eating out of his hand two minutes after he stepped on it. Well, how does he measure up to the Morton? Better. You ask Keith when he comes in. But then we have a chance of winning this year. Well, with Joshua riding for us, we have a chance. Sure you wouldn't like to make a little bet, Jared? No, I wouldn't like to make a little bet. As a matter of fact, I'd feel a lot better if we called this whole thing off. For the first time in four years, we have a chance of winning this rodeo, and he wants to call it off. Why? Because it stopped being just a contest between two ranches. The whole thing's getting out of hand. Because I made a bet. Oh. Well, all the hands out there have made bets, too, you know. Nick, it has nothing to do with the betting. Now, you remember what happened last year, that fight with the Mortons in the saloon? Uh, boys were just letting off a little steam, so. Uh-huh. And then what followed that? They sold at our water holes. We had to spook their cattle. We should have done worse. Nick, can't you see what's happening? This isn't a rodeo anymore. It's turning into a feud. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Four years ago, we started this rodeo as a constructive way of handling the rivalry between us and the Mortons. Now, if it hasn't worked out, perhaps we should call it off. Mother, this rodeo is my responsibility. I'm not about to call it off. Nick, what if somebody gets killed? That is also my responsibility. Sure you wouldn't like to make a little bet? Oh, you yeah. hard-headed. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha. 
<laughs> Are you going to keep laughing like a blamed hyena all night long? I can't help it, Paul. I keep thinking about Nick Barkley. You know, he ain't ever going to learn his lesson. Man's got pride. You can't fault him for that. I ain't faulting him. It's his money that's going to buy us that new breeding stock in Denver. And, uh, I guess you plan to, uh, go to Denver yourself and pick up those critters. Yeah, you, Jay. It's a pretty long trip to Denver. A couple of young fellas could get into trouble in a wild town like that. Well, we sure aim to try. You know something? Barkley's got no monopoly on pride. You boys have done everything. And I've asked of you and more. And you've raised up just like I hoped you would. Tough, skilled, and you don't know the meaning of the word lose. Uh. Hey, Paul? Is that? In here, son. Boy, I'm not glad you're up. Hey, where you been? Well, I've been in town. I was with a bunch of them Barclay hands. First off, I thought they was all drunk. They try and jump you, son? No, Pa. They all wanted to bet on the rodeo. Won't you tell them to line up? Well, yeah, sure. Told them they could bet any amount they wanted. I didn't figure it out till later. And then I found out they got this new hand out there. A black man by the name of Joshua Watson. Talk is he's the greatest rodeo rider that ever got up into a saddle. Did you see him? No, I didn't see him, but... Oh, now, one black man ain't gonna scare us off. I got three champions riding for us and paying them more money than they've ever seen. Well, Pa, that's what bothers me. They know who we got riding for us, but they're betting on this Watson fella. They ain't any smarter than Nick Barkley. I know every good rider in the country, and I never heard of a Joshua Watson. You? No. Nope. <laughs> well, you can just stop your worrying, J.R. And just tell them to keep sending in the bets. Pa, I ain't worried. Ah. Well, okay, okay. Anyway, I, I figure he's as good as they say he is. We can always hire him for ourselves. Right, Pa? <laughs> <laughs> like I was telling your brother. A Morton doesn't know the meaning of the word lose. Hey, easy, man. Save some of that vinegar for the rodeo. Where can we get along fine? I'll be fit come rodeo time. You know, me and you's pretty much the same, Joshua. <laughs> How's that? Oh, I come from a sharecropping family. Hard work's all I've had. Most of it without pay. Well, like you, or the government cuts you free. This rodeo means everything to me, Joshua. I got a wife and two boys back home. And I've been saving every penny I earned for the past two years to bring them here. I bet every bit of it on you. I'll do my best. Yeah. Ready in a minute. Joshua, we never had anyone like you around here before. I guess my kind's rare in these parts. Oh, no, no, I didn't mean that. We, we've had a lot of Negroes working on this ranch. It's just that, well, you know, freed men come west, finding a new start. But we never had a hand that could do it all. Where'd you learn all this about ranching? It just comes naturally, I guess. Where are you from? Lots of places. <laughs> Most cowboys are. Where's your home? Place I'm at.
Thanks. But nothing. Nothing? About the best shooting I ever saw. All I did was pull the trigger. Snake did the rest. How's that? Well, when the rattler sees a bullet coming, he strikes out at it. Oh, well. Beautiful, Joshua. Thank you, Nick. From the sound of it, I'd say your father must have been a preacher. No, he was a slave, Nick. A field slave. Nick! Bert! Bert, what happened? What happened? I was... I was chasing strays. to the ranch. Charlie, go on to the town and get the doctor. What are you going to do? I got a little call on the Mortons. You're not going out there in the dark. By the time I get there, it'll be morning.
here. Just like you said. You shot Bert. Well, he was spooking our cattle. You're a liar. You be careful who you call in a liar. Well, if that wasn't an invite to a fight, I'd... <laughs> Of course I'm all right. Just fine. How'd you know I was here? Charlie told me. <sighs> sure you're all right? I don't need your help. I'm fine. Leave me alone. Keep your brother away from here. Next time, I'll get it worse. All right, I'm ready. Uh, how's the eye feel? Fine, just fine. Sure you don't want a cold town? No, no, this will do nicely, thank you. Okay. said nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say that's the best one I've ever seen. They don't come any better. Hey, Nick, if you don't mind a little suggestion, I think the best place for that beefsteak is on a plate with some mashed potatoes. Who did it? Mortons. Ah, the Mortons. Well, you've just been itching for a fight with them, haven't you? And you finally got it. Well, they haven't heard the last of it either. Now, look, with that eye, you're not exactly ready for a beauty contest as it is, much less go back... Look, Jared, I'll worry about my eye. But they shot Bert. And they said that he was spooking their cattle, and it's a lie. Where are you going? I'm going up and have a hot bath. I'll be as good as new in an hour. Here, all you need now is a mashed potato. Forget it. What? What you're thinking won't do any good. Well, then maybe I better have a little talk with Rufus, try and reason with him. The reason things are the way they are is because Rufus can't be reasoned with. Bert shot. They stomped on Nick. And they've gone too far. I say we go over to their ranch and crack a few heads. Are you with us, Josh? Yep, I'm with you. Well, come on, let's go. Where are you? 
you boys heading? To the Mortons. Nobody leaves this ranch, is that understood? You've got a right to even things up. Any man that rides out to fight the Mortons is fired, is that understood? And the Mortons? That's where I'm heading right now, to have a little talk with them. Rufus, for the last time, I came out here for only one reason. To get you to call this rodeo off. And you rode out here for nothing. Yeah, what do you want to call the rodeo off for? We hear you got a man who can win it for you all by himself. Yeah. Yeah, ain't he as good as they say he is? <laughs> Listen, J.R., why don't you go open the front door and uh, let this man and the smell out of here. I'd like to remind you, gentlemen, the man's already been shot, badly wounded. He was lucky. I told my boys to shoot to kill any one of your hands that crossed my lines. And can't you see what a tragic mistake that is? Call it off before someone is killed. My boys have been looking forward to this for a year. And I'm not going to be the one to spoil their sport. I never thought I'd live to see the day when a Barclay would ask me to back off. Rufus, I'm not asking you to back off. I'm asking you to do what makes sense. You know, it adds up to the same thing. Morton's backing down. If you don't back down this time, it means a fight. So be it. And we'll settle this thing between us once and for all. You're just itching for a fight, aren't you, Rufus? Well, all right. The Barclays don't back down either. So if it's a fight you want, it's a fight you're going to get. Seven seconds. Well, he almost made it. Seven seconds ain't enough. Almost ain't good enough. He's got to stay on the animal eight seconds. All right, Jim, that'll be enough for today. Go get yourself a hot bath. How do you do it, Joshua? I just stay loose, Nick. I let the animal do the work. You see, staying on the horse eight seconds is important. But what's more important is making it look good. You see, the easier you make it look, the quicker you catch the judge's eye. Oh, Jared. How's Jim doing? He's doing pretty good. Joshua here's working with him. If those Morton boys had any sense, they'd start worrying. I think they already are, Nick. Charlie tells me he saw Zach and J.R. up on the ridge watching Joshua with a pair of glasses. <laughs> you don't say. Well, you tell Charlie. Next time he sees those two poor boys, invite them on down here. It's a shame for them to stand all the way back on that ridge and strain their eye. And I think maybe I'll treat your eyes to some fancy roping. Nick's roping's pretty fancy, ain't it? Yeah, yeah, it sure is, Joshua. Begging your pardon, Jared, you look a little worried. It ain't the rodeo, is it? No, 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 it's... Well, I guess it's just a lot of things all together. But I guess if nobody panics, everything will work out all right. Silas? Silas? Oh, yes, Miss Hardra. Oh, you're looking at the almanac? Yes, ma'am. Well, if you're checking on the weather for the day of the rodeo, it'll be sunny and warm, temperature in the high 80s. I checked it yesterday. That's good, Miss Audrey. But I wasn't checking on the weather. The almanac has all the famous rodeo riders in it. Oh, that's right. And if anybody can ride rodeo like Joshua can, he just might be a champion. Was his name mentioned in there? Yeah. No, it doesn't seem to be. But of course, after we beat the Mortons, I bet they write a whole page on him. You're proud of him, aren't you? Yes, Miss Audra. He's something. 
You know, Silas, we don't really know very much about him. Have you had a chance to talk with him? We've talked once in a while. Did he say anything about himself? No, ma'am. I guess that surprises you? A little. Joshua and I are the same in one respect. We are both black men. But we are different, Miss Audra. Different as day is tonight. In what way? I've always worked in a big house like this one. I was treated special because I belong to the house. All my life, I've been indoors. And Joshua? He's from the fields, from the outdoors. He's never known nothing but hard work and the whip. He's a new breed. He's restless. He's proud. And he's searching. Searching for a place that he can call home. A place where he can stand up as a man. Joshua, I gotta drop this by the bank. Have yourself a beer. I'll join you in a minute. Okay. Joshua Watson. You must be Rufus Morton. You know me? Well, everybody around here knows you. Morton, you people don't exactly walk around on tiptoe, you know. <laughs> we have no need to. Truth is, you're not exactly a secret around here either. Can I talk to you? Talk? What you want to talk about? How would you like to work for me? I got a job. I'll pay you double what the Barclays are paying. Nobody can best what the Barclays are paying. Oh, we'll see about that. I'll buy you a drink and we can talk. Bartender? I got a drink. Hey, boy. Are you refusing to drink with my paw? Man has a right to pick his own drinking company. Begging your pardon, Heath. The man asked me the question. And the answer is, yes, I'm refusing. Uh, you think you're too good to drink with us? You think what you want. You almost made it to the other world. Huh? Only two kinds of men handle a gun like that. Outlaw or a lawman. And he's no lawman. No, not tonight. Me and my saddle got a lot of work to be done before rodeo time. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, oh, Heath was telling me that Rufus Morton offered you a job. Twice your pay. You turned it down. How come? 
Well, if Foreman's retiring at the end of the month, I'd like his job. Oh, now, wait a minute, Josh. That, uh, that Foreman's job, why, that wouldn't pay half the money old Morton would. Well, you see, the way I look at it, it pays better. Well, you know something, Joshua? You might just be the man for the job. <laughs> Good night. Good night, Nick. Still having trouble with the Peterson case? No, no, I'm... I'm having trouble with my own stupid case. You know what I did today? I went over to the Mortons to see if I could talk him out of this rodeo. You what? Oh, you don't have to worry. I, I let that Rufus get me so mad, I told him we'd meet him head to head if that's the way they want it. Oh, that's better. No, it isn't better. Huh? Nick, let's talk about this rationally. Let's talk about what's best for the Barclays and the Mortons. Oh, now, come on, Mother. Don't think about it. Suppose we did cancel the rodeo. Well, we can't. The men have bet a full month's salary. They'd have to forfeit their money. All right, we can cover that. Is there another reason? Yes. What? Your ridiculous bet with Zack? No. Well, then what? For three years, the Mortons have stomped us at rodeo. And this year, thanks to Joshua, we have a chance to stomp them, and I'm not about to pass it up. Oh, Nick. Well, now, what is all this about? J.R., take off your hat. What do you want? Your new hired man, Joshua Watson. Oh, yes. He said you offered Joshua a job, and he turned you down. I didn't come here to hire him, Victoria. I came here to take him in. What? Do you mean arrest him? What for? I think he's an outlaw. You think? If I could get him to Phoenix, I could prove it. Joshua turns you down cold. You never could stand to be turned down. Turning me down had nothing to do with it, Victoria. I do business in Phoenix. And the last time I was there, the law was looking for a black man who rode with Coleman's Raiders. And you think that Joshua is the man that they're looking for? He fits a description. Of all that dirty. You show me an outlaw that would turn down the money you offered Joshua. What makes you think Joshua's the man they want in Phoenix? After what I saw in the saloon, I'm sure of it. Uh, Rufus, that's a pretty serious accusation. I trust you have the evidence to back it up. There's plenty of evidence in Phoenix. I came here tonight to ask you to do the right thing. Oh, and uh, what was that? Turn Joshua Watson over to the law in Stockton. Well, now, Rufus, I thought I knew how much this rodeo meant to you, but I had no idea how low you'd stoop to win it. You either turn Joshua Watson over to the law tonight, or I'll come back in the morning and take him by force. The streets of Laredo as I walked out in the street one day I saw a poor cowboy all wrapped in white linen all wrapped in white linen and cold as a clay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Take me to green valleys and lay the sod o'er me. For I'm a young cowboy and I know I've done wrong. <laughs> Things are going to be different for me and you, horse. The Barclays offered us a home, and we're going to take it. You seem to have a way with that horse. Oh, we got understanding. You are some man, Mr. Watson. The Barclays are mighty proud of you, and so am I. Well, oh, thank you, Silas. They're counting on you to win the rodeo. I won't let them down. Of course, if he wasn't here, there wouldn't be no rodeo. And no trouble, huh? Yes. You asking me to ride out? I don't want to see none of the Barclays hurt. There's been a lot of trouble already, and there's a lot more coming. This rodeo means everything to Nick, and he's been good to me. He give me a job here at the ranch, give me a home. And ain't no way I'm going to ride away from that. Joshua. Well? Rufus Morton says you're an outlaw. 
And unless we turn you over to the sheriff, he'll take you by force. We turned him down. Thank you, ma'am. No thanks are necessary if you're not the man they want in Phoenix. However, there's going to be trouble. It might even start a range war. And there's something I have to know before the fighting starts. What's that, ma'am? Did you ride with Coleman Raiders? No, ma'am. And you're not the man they want in Phoenix? No. Where are you from, Joshua? Well, I'm from lots of places, Miss Barkley. Places with bad memories. Places I'd like to forget. on the east. Maybe he ain't coming. Horton's never backed away from a fight yet. He'll be coming. Nick. That's far enough, Rufus. Back off, Nick. You don't have a chance. Let's try us. Looking for a fight, we'll give it to him. Circle to the left. running away, aren't you? I guess Rufus Morton was right. You did ride with Hardy Coleman. I was another man then. That was a long time ago. Why? I was set free, but that was all. I had no home, no family, no place to go. Hardy took me in, taught me to ride, used my gun. Gave me a chance to be a man, or so I thought at that time. We're offering you a chance, a real chance. But if you run, it's all over for you. And if I don't run, there's three years waiting for me in Phoenix. We're offering you a lifetime right here on this ranch. Three years might not sound like a long time to you. But for a man that's been a slave, it's eternity. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. It ain't no use. I appreciate all you've tried to do for me, and I thank you for it. But ain't no way I'm gonna give up my freedom now. Then you're a coward. No, Miss Barkley. It's easy for you to judge me, ain't it? You with your fine ranch and your big fine family. Man. It wasn't always this way. When my husband brought me here, this was wasteland, barren land. We worked hard and suffered to make it what it is. Suffered? Suffered, you and your family? You don't know what suffering is. Suffering is watching your mother and father being sold on the auction block. Suffering is working hard all day till your body aches, give out and drop. Suffering is watching the world from the outside, knowing nobody wants you in. But times change, so do people. Not fast enough. Joshua, we've got to start somewhere. I'm sorry, Miss Barkley.
Tell them I'm gone. And ain't no need fighting. Longer. I'll go get some help. Pin down. They need help. Get the men on the north range. You all right? Go on, get. I'll be all right. Abaddon, the slaves used to travel by the stars. They'd find the Big Dipper and follow them off to freedom. Which way is freedom now? Which way do I go? How are you fixed for ammunition? Oh, how's yours? About six rounds less, all. Hold your fire! Hold it! Hold your fire! Wait a minute, wait a minute, hold it! Joshua, get out of here! Ain't no need in fighting them, Nick. I'm the man they want in Phoenix. Yeah, what? They had me right. I'm giving myself up. Paul, maybe it's a trick. We'll soon find out. Watson, did I hear you right? You're turning yourself in? Yeah, that's right. I'm turning myself in. Let's go! It's all over! Joshua. Sorry to cause you all the trouble, Nick. Well, why didn't you run? Well, I started to, but then I changed my mind. Changed your mind? What about? Yeah, I got to figure there ain't no way I can make a new life for myself until I find the right stars. Yeah. Do I get a job when I get out? It'll be waiting for you. All right. Well, maybe he stays in one piece till the rodeo starts. That's my boy. Ain't you had enough, Nick? Ain't a man that can't be throwed, and ain't a horse that can't be rode.
Darcy. You have a good trip home. Jerry, couldn't you ride with me? J just as far as Lathrop. No, no, I don't think that'd be a wise idea to be seen traveling together. I'll catch the next stage out to Stockton. I guess we say goodbye. Yes. Goodbye, Marcy. I wish things hadn't happened this way. It's all over now, isn't it? Yes, it's over. You go home. Go home to your husband and that son of yours. Jared, you've been wonderful to me. I'll never forget you. Sorry, Pa. I just can't seem to hit it. Nothing to worry about, Davy. You'll get the hang of it. How's the shoulder holding up? Kind of aches, but I'm gonna hit that target if it's the last thing I do. Well, that's the way, Davy. When we Howards want something bad enough, we don't let a little ache stop us, do we? No. Now, you gotta keep the rifle butt snug against the shoulder. Right? Now remember what I told you. The target's gotta stay right on top of the sight. Take a deep breath, hold, and squeeze the trigger. All right, let me see you do it. <laughs> You're getting there. Here, let me show you. Ma! Hi. Oh, how's my boy? Oh, how I've missed you. You must have grown two inches. Hello, darling. Welcome home, Marcy. Why didn't you let us know you were coming back today? We'd have met you. Oh, well, I, I wanted it to be a surprise. Oh. How's Edith? Oh, fine, fine. She doesn't have pneumonia after all. I'm glad to hear it. And the trip? Well, it was, it was long and tiresome, you know. Here, I got you something. I hope you like it. Well... I'm home now, and if I know you two, you haven't had lunch. Huh? Is it lunchtime? Is it lunchtime? It's two o'clock. You're absolutely right, Marcy. We forgot all about eating, oh, didn't shame we? Shame on you two. Oh, Adam, before I forget, this telegram was at the house oh. phone. a surprise for everybody. We're going on a long trip, all of us this time. A trip? Where to? Stockton. I have some business there. Oh, boy! 
Stockton. Oh, Adam, if, if it's a business trip, you, you don't want Davey and me alone. No reason why a man can't travel with his family, Marcy. No, of course not. Uh, but I just got back, and I've got so many things to do. I I've got the Forbes coming to dinner, and, and on Thursday I have plans that... Sure, those things can be postponed. I thought you'd be pleased. You haven't been to Stockton in years. We'll have a chance to see our dear friend Jared Barkley again. You'll like that, won't you? Yes. Yes, I I'd like that. All right. Then it's settled. We leave tomorrow. see you. Hey, wait a minute. Let me have a look at you. You know something? I think you've grown about three feet. Well, Jared, it's good to see you again. Good, good to see you, Adam. Look at this man, Marcy. He hasn't changed a bit. Six years. Handsome as ever. <laughs> You're looking pretty fit yourself. And Marcy, you are just what this old town needs. A fresh breeze. It's good to see you. It's good to see you, too, Jared. Old friends like you two shaking hands? I'd say a kiss was more in order. Well, Adam, your letter didn't say. Business or pleasure? A little of both. Now, don't tell me you finally decided to expand into Stockton. Oh, blame it on yourself. When we were together in San Francisco, you never stopped boosting this town. I'm finally doing something about it. I'm going to look around and investigate a few things. And if I know you, you've already investigated. You're on to me, Jared. I may have done just that. Well, if you'll excuse me, I'll round up the luggage. Davey, want to give me a hand? We'll take the luggage out here. So that... Jared, I've got to talk to you. What's that? Not here. Tomorrow afternoon. Mom! Hey, Mom! I thought you were going to help your father. Can I go fishing tomorrow? Yes. I think that'd be a wonderful idea. You know, I know just the place. I used to go there when I was a little girl. River Grove. Oh, boy! <laughs> Isn't this a lovely place, David? I've had some wonderful times here. Pa should have come with us. Why didn't he? Well, he was busy, you know. Some other time. Where's that stream? Oh, it's just up the way. Hello there. Look, Ma, it's Uncle Jared. Oh, what a nice surprise. Hey, young fella, come on up here. Atta boy. David and I were having a little picnic. I'm sure there'll be enough for you. Oh? I'm going fishing. You're going fishing? Well, now, Davy, that might be kind of tough to do. We're right in the middle of a drought, and that old stream is all dried up. Isn't there any place I can catch me some fish? No, no, I'm afraid there isn't. Hey, I got an idea. Didn't you used to collect rocks? You can collect rocks anywhere. Yeah, but can you collect gold nuggets just anywhere? Gold? Big as your fist. Washed down out of those hills into that dried up old stream, just waiting for some young fellow like you to come along and scoop them up. Really? Well, I'm... Uh, I'm not going to guarantee anything, but I figure it's worth a try, don't you? Where is it? Right over there. Mom, I'm going to strike me some gold. Be careful, David. Thanks for coming. I don't think this was a very good idea, Marcy. I have a feeling... I have a feeling Adam knows about our meetings. How could he know? I don't know. I should have told him. I mean, he couldn't have come here just on business. Well, you don't know anything for sure, though, do you, Marcy? No, I... I, I just have a feeling that it, it's something to do with us. Well, you have a feeling, but you don't know anything for sure. When we met, he seemed to be the same old self. 
Oh, no, Jaron. No, you've worked for him. You know him better than that. He's always his, his most charming when he's about to break someone. Oh, Jared, I'm scared. What are we going to do? We don't do anything. We just wait. All we know for sure is that he's here on business. <sighs> much longer. Leave this the rest of the herd. That creek on the south range is bone dry. Well, now, it was full up two days ago. It takes more than two days for a creek to dry up. Unless Fred Brady dammed it up on his end. Well, now, why would he do that? I don't know. Let's go find out. All right, yeah. <laughs> Fence for what they're usually for to keep our stock in, everybody else is out. Any water in that creek up there? Plenty of water. Well, now, uh, you better have a talk with your boss. Wouldn't do you any good if he thinks he's gonna dam up a creek in the middle of a drought. Oh, well, we better straighten him out. Now, you just better stay right where you are. Look, we've been sharing that creek with Brady for years. Well, now, that might be. But it ain't his place anymore, that's all. This place been sold. To who? Pa? Can you take me riding today? I'm busy. You can see that, can't you? Maybe later? Not today. Tomorrow? We'll see, David. We'd better go now and let your father get back to his work. Did you get my gloves? Adam, whatever it is, please don't take it out on him. Thank you. Uncle Jared! Hello, Davy. Can you take me riding today? Riding? Sorry, young fella. I wish I could. You'll have to settle for your mother's company, David. Hello, Jared. Hello, Marcy. Adam. Maybe we can have another picnic at River Grove. Another picnic? Yes. David and I were picnicking the other afternoon, and well, Jared rode by, so naturally. Uh, you invited him to stay, naturally. Well, we better go on and let these men do their work. Nice to see you again, Jared. Nice to see you, Marcy. How are you, Jared? That's fine, Adam. Can I get you a drink? Thank you. I, uh, stopped by to discuss with you the damming up of Brady Creek. Actually, Nick wanted to come, but he tends to be just a little bit impulsive. Yes, I heard that about him. You should really watch that. Now, about the creek, when I acquire new property, I fence it in as promptly as possible. Fencing is one thing, Adam. Damming it up is another. You need that water. You bet we do. We have 500 head of prime beef that need watering. With the drought, we stand a chance of losing them. There's enough water in that stream, Adam, for a dozen herds. I'm afraid I can't accommodate you, Jared. You're refusing us water? That's exactly what I'm doing. I don't understand, Adam. I thought we were friends. 
And I'm behaving like your worst enemy, and you would like to know why. Is that right, Jared? That's right, I would. Well, let's start with Carson City. Six months ago. Does that answer your question? No. All right. Let's try Modesto, a week before last. Does that give you a clue? Now, please get out of here. I've got another apartment. Whatever you're thinking, Adam, you're wrong. Get out. So he's a real old close friend of yours, huh? Well, let me tell you something. That kind of man doesn't have any close friends. How do you think he built that empire of his? Oh, Nick, Adam is an empire builder, and I've heard he can be ruthless at times, but why? What would be his reason? Perhaps there's a reason we don't even know about. Is that possible? I get the distinct feeling that all of you think this has something to do with me. Well, he is your closest friend. Am I being accused of something? Accused of what, Jared? I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. I think maybe I'll have a talk with this Mr. Howard. You will not. I'll handle this. In the meantime, why can't you use the San Joaquin River? It's too rough a dry when I heard getting weaker every hour. This heat, they'd never make it. Well, there has to be an answer for this somewhere. I'll find it legally. You better find it fast, Jared. Those cattle need water, and legal or otherwise, we're going to get water to them. Barkley? How's that new baby of yours? Oh, he's come along just fine. Me and the missus want to thank you for the present you sent over. It's my pleasure. Uh, Miss Barkley, hmm? I guess you'll find out sooner or later. I might as well be the one to tell you. Tell me what? Your son told me you just harvested your pear crop. That's right. They'll be here and ready for shipping sometime tomorrow. Well, I, I'm afraid we can't handle them. What do you mean? I'm sorry as can be, Miss Barkley, but I've got orders. From whom? It's all right, Slade. I'll handle it. Adam, I don't understand what... There's nothing to understand. My company has a right to refuse anyone's patronage. Your company? I've been a member of the board of directors for many years. I just decided to take a more active interest in company policy. I see. Well, what's the reason? I'm not obliged to give you any reason. Ship the pairs with some other company. But you're the only freight line in this area. And if you don't ship them, or an entire year's crop will be ruined. But even more important than that, Adam, you're our friend. Why are you doing this? Why? Now, you ask your son, Victoria. Ask Jared about my wife and about the Seventh Commandment. I brought you some coffee. Oh, my goodness. Last time I saw so many books, you were studying for your law degree. Well, I'm trying to find a legal basis to force Adam Howard to tear down that dam. Hmm? Stream is on his property. Yes, I know it's on his property, but there's such a thing as custom, such a thing as morality. Say, that smells good. I mean, does any man have the right, any man, to literally slaughter another man's cattle? That's what you say, but what does the law say? Well... Law says a man's property is his kingdom, his house is his castle, but there's a precedent for common usage. I intend to get Judge Lawson to issue an injunction based on that precedent. Jared, why is Adam doing this? That's not as important as stopping him. As long as this was just your business, I would never interfere, and you know it. But now it concerns all of us, the ranch, all of us. I spoke to Adam today, very briefly. 
But he said something odd. He said to ask you about his wife and the seventh commandment. Mother, I have never had an affair with Marcy Howard. Then what is it that makes Adam think so? All right. He found out that I met with Marcy. Met with her several times. These meetings. Why, Jared? I can't tell you that. You'll just have to trust me. All right, Jared. All right. I'll have Silas bring you some sandwiches. You must be hungry. You're kind of busy. Yes, I'm very busy. I said I'm very busy, David. Now, what is it you want? I wanted to give you this. I made it. It's a present for you. Thank you, David. I sure did need a new tobacco pouch. I was going to save it until Christmas. But I don't know. I just wanted to give you something now. Well, that's... That's very nice. I guess I've been in a lot of trouble to you on this trip. Getting in the way, and always asking to go riding. I bet that made you mad at me. Mad at you? Why do you think that? Well, not mad exactly. But I don't know. You just act different. That's all. Like, well, like you didn't want me around anymore. If I did something wrong, Pa, I didn't mean to. When I get back in school, I'll do all my lessons every night without having to be told. I promise. Oh, I know you will, Davy. I know you will. I wish we could go home so things would be the way they were before. You and Mother and me, together. You know, the way it was. The way it was. It will be the same when we get home, won't it, Pa? I guess I'm bothering you again. David, I hope you're not interrupting your father. I'm going shopping. I'd like it if you could come with me to help carry the packages. Do you need anything, Adam? No. No, thank you, nothing. Come on, David. Don't you understand me, Jared? They're dying every day, every hour they're dying. 
You ride out there with me right now, and I'll show you a dozen new carcasses. Nick, I know they're dying. Now, I have already told you. I filed a brief for an injunction with... The Dr. devil with your briefs! We're talking about water for cattle! Now, Nick, you listen to me. These things take time. He has to study the legal precedents. Now, you know Judge Lawson. He's a fussy old man. Likes to chew an issue from all sides. The cattle can't wait for a judge to chew issues. I'm seeing him again first thing in the morning. I'm pushing him all I can. Well, you better push him a little harder. Judge Lawson, I was just coming to see you. Have you reached a decision on my brief yet? Interesting, Jared. Extremely interesting. Yes, under the common usage precedent, it would seem the stream comes under the heading of public right of way. Well, then what you're saying is that Adam Howard had no right to dam up that stream. Well, it would seem so, but uh, there are certain gray areas. What do you mean, gray areas? Judge, I dug up more than a dozen cases, surely enough to establish that... You may be right, Jared. You certainly may, but I'll want to hear both sides in court. In court? But that could take days, even weeks. Judge, you've got ample precedent to issue that injunction right now. Well, possibly, but I'm from the old school, Jared. I believe a court should render decisions, not issue injunctions. Judge, our cattle are dying right now, just as though they were being systematically slaughtered. It's been a terrible drought, no question. Then why can't you issue that injunction? I've tried to explain to you, Jared. And I think maybe I'm beginning to understand. Adam Howard bought that land and everything else he can get his hands on. Does that include you? I'll take into account exactly how much you have at stake, Jared. And how overwrought you are. <laughs> See Howard. Jared asked us to wait a couple of days. You said you would, Nick. If you recollect, I said I'd think about it. And the more I think about waiting for Judge Lawson and now waiting for the court in Sacramento and then maybe waiting for the Supreme Court, I think it's best that you and Jared wait. I'll see to Howard. Come on, Dick. Yeah. 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 Foley. I want you to check with the railroad about a spur for the new property. Also, come on in. Let Smith have. Well, another Barkley. Wouldn't it save time if you all came down here at once? I'd like to ask you a few questions, Mr. Hogg. I don't have to answer, Mr. Barkley. Well, you're going to hear them anyway. You're quite wrong. I have some business to discuss with these men. Now, will you please excuse me? Well, I have some business to discuss with you, Mr. Howard. It's about water. I've said all I'm going to say about that water. Why are you doing this to us? You ask your brother, Jared. Now, get out of here, Barkley. What's Jared got to do with it? Well, you heard, Mr. Howard. Now, get going. I don't want any trouble. to his ranch. Make it down to that fence. He'll try to get his cattle through. Oh, no. What's wrong? What's going on here? Take him out the back way. Nothing to worry about, Mrs. Howard. Just a troublemaker. Everything's all right. Mother, that man, is he dead? Adam, I've got to 
talk to you. Now. All right. You should have seen it. David, you promised Annie that you'd write her a letter. Now, I want you to go into your room and do that right now. I just wanted to tell Pa about the marriage. I'll tell him. I'll tell him. You write that letter now, and you're through. I'll look it over for mistakes. Do I have to now? Yes, David. Go write that letter. Adam, that was Nick Barkley. That's right. You're trying to ruin a whole family, tear down everything they've built because of Jared. Because of Jared, exactly. Adam, you're wrong about Jared. No more lies, Marcy. I've got reports from a private detective just before we came down here. Reports that give dates, places, hotel registers that you both signed. Are they all lies, Marcy? No. No. We met. I could never tell you why we met before now. Well. All right, Marcy. Tell me. I'm telling Aunt Edith about the drought, but I don't think I'm spelling it right. D R O U G H T. D O U G H T. It still looks funny, but I guess I'll never be a champion speller. Look at it, Pa. Is it right? Yes. Yes, maybe it's right. Look at my handwriting. That's getting better, too, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Much better, Davy. Much better. Now, go ahead and finish that letter. I guess there won't be any horseback riding today. No. No, I don't think so, Davy. Now, go ahead and finish the letter. All right, Marcy. The truth. Go on. I'm listening. I can't. I, I just can't. When, when did all this start? I mean, were you in love with Jared when you married me? And then just went on pretending oh, that everything was fine? Adam, I do love you. You've made me happier than I ever thought I could be. No, no, I don't believe you, Marcy. Not after those reports. You know how much I loved you, Marcy. Those 15 years with Cora were good years. But there was always something missing. A child, a son. When she died, I thought I'd never marry again. Then I met you, beautiful Marcy, young enough to be my daughter. And I fell in love. A wonder of wonders, a child, a boy, my son, Davy. I was a lucky man, wasn't I, Marcy? At my age, beginning a son, someone to inherit my name, to take over everything I worked for. And I loved my son. And I loved you, Marcy, for giving him to me. But what did you really give me, Marcy? Some other man's child? Yes. Another man's child. Jared Barclays. No! All right, Adam, you wanted the truth. Now you're going to hear it. The whole truth. You were right. I did deceive you. At first because I was a, a, a stupid, thoughtless girl. But later on because I loved you. All those meetings with Jared and you say you love me? Jared's only proud and this was to... Try and help me save my marriage, our marriage. I 
I was in love with a man. A man who had no goodness, no kindness in him. And most of all, no love for me. When you went to London, I saw him again. But only long enough to say goodbye. To tell him that I was in love with my husband. Adam Howard. It was a little too late for goodbyes. Because I was already carrying his child. <laughs> Two years ago, he came to the house. He wanted to... Uh, he wanted to borrow some money. He saw David. He noticed the resemblance. And he knew. Then he wanted to borrow more than just a few dollars. I was so scared, I, I didn't know what to do. I said I'd get it for him. I wrote to Jared. I said, please meet me in Carson City. I need help. And he just came running to help you, is that it? He said, forget about paying the blackmail and that I should come to you right away with the truth, but I couldn't. I just couldn't. There didn't seem to be any way out until Jared checked into his background, found out that he was a wanted man, and he told him to, to leave the country. My last meeting with Jarrett was in Modesto. When he told me I was finally free of him, he'd gone to Mexico. That's the truth. There was no other man. It was Jarrett. Oh, Adam. No, Jared just tried to help me. Help us. Claire! Now, I want you and your son out of here by the time I return. Do you hear me? Adam, where are you going? That's no concern of yours now. Adam! Is shooting Jared gonna make you feel better? David, I want you to pack your things. We're leaving. We're going home? No, no. But I thought instead of you having to write Aunt Edith, we could go for a visit. What about Pa? Well, well he won't be able to come with us. He has to do something. You said he was going to shoot somebody. Uncle Jared. Oh, no. No, he's not going to shoot anyone. You get your things together. If Pa's gonna stay, I wanna stay too, Ma. Oh, Davy. <laughs> Look, it, sometimes things happen between a man and a woman. <laughs> it's nothing to do with you, so don't blame yourself. But, um, your father doesn't want us to be with him anymore. But why? Because it's so hard to explain. Tell me. I will. I will when I come back, okay? Give me a big hug. I have to go and do something very important. You promise me you'll be all right, huh? I'll be all right. That's my boy. Okay. I'll be back as soon as I can. All right, let's get him out of here. Swing, come on, come on. We've got work to do. Get him, my own. Get out. Get out. Put that door shut. Yeah. All right, let's go. Okay. <laughs> right. 
Nick. Oh. Nick, do you hear it? Uh. How'd I get here? Somebody just delivered you in a wagon. Adam Howard. Looks like that talk didn't work out, huh? We didn't talk. Anyway, it's all right with me. I'm through talking anyway. I get them cattle to water. You think you're gonna get them through that fence? That's what I think. Just like that? Just like that. Now, the cattle and the men are all ready to go. You going with us or not? Nick, that's big trouble. Then stay here. I'll get saddled. Come on. to you. Your friend Howard's what happened to me. I told you to stay away from him. I know what you told me, but I've got a whole herd of thirsting cattle out there. And for your information, I'm taking them out to the Brady's Creek. Then I trust you've made arrangements at the local funeral parlor. No more talk. We tried it your way, Jared. We tried it. It did not work. Now, you listen to me, Nick. What you're planning to do is wrong, dead wrong. And if you think I'm going to let that hard head of yours get you killed, you got another thing coming. Wait a minute, wait a minute, Jared. Will you wait a minute? I'm, uh, sorry, big brother. I'll get Silas to look after him. I'll meet you up on the North Ridge. All right. <laughs> Here you are, Mr. Jack. Just lay still for a while. Nick and Heath are gone, huh? To that fence. There's going to be trouble. Kill him. Don't you worry, Silas. There won't be if I can help it. Oh, Jared. Oh, thank God you're all right. What is it, Marcy? Oh, Jared, I, I told him. I, I told him everything. And he didn't believe one word of it, Jared, not one word. And he took his rifle when he left. He didn't believe you, huh? Well, Marcy, looks like we've passed the time for truth and understanding. Well, now it's a time for guns, is that it? You show me a way to stop it. Jared, wait a minute! Jared! The old man said, here they come. Hold it, mister. Nobody gets through. Like I said, somebody's going to get killed. Nick, all right. You're here to stop us, Jared. You're on the wrong side of the fence. I'm not here to stop you, Nick. I'm going with you. Bringing these cattle through. Riot! 
And they're dead men! Things you don't understand. That's what Mother said. Things I can't understand. Well, maybe I can't. But I sure as heck can't understand you not wanting to be my father anymore. Oh, it has nothing to do with you, Davy. Your mother. It happened a long time ago. I don't know what happened a long time ago, and I don't care. All I know is that I'm your son and you're my father. Ain't that so? Yes. That's so, Davy. But there's more to it. There's no more to it. If you're my father, you just can't up and stop being it. You just can't do that. You just can't. Bolton! Foley! The rest of you, tear this fence down, fast! Is that clear? Well, you got it out here. You can get it back. What a lovely sound. The most beautiful music I've ever heard. Jared! So ends the beautiful music. Oh, if the rain keeps up, I'm gonna trade my horse in for a boat. Ah. No pleasing him. That's the first good drink our cattle have had in months. Yeah, if they don't drown first. Here. Thank you. Oh, Jared, I uh, picked up a letter for you. Oh, ah, thank you. Well, I'll be. It's from little Davy Howard. Let's see what he has to say. Dear Uncle Jared, Mother and Father and I are all fine. I hope you are, too. There's going to be a big party here soon. It is their anniversary. Father is going to write you and invite you and your family to come. Oh, I sure Jared. hope you'll be there, your friend David Howard. I'd love to go. <laughs> I think it'd be a good idea. 
Let's have dinner. And we must start thinking about an appropriate gift. Well, now, Mother, what do you get a couple that's finally got everything? 